Hi, welcome to Life is a Treasure podcast. I'm your hostess, Michelle Durand, and this is episode number 21. Today, I am joined with a guest, and her name is Tracy Swainson. Tracy Swainson is an intuitive grief mentor and energy healer. Her work aims to increase awareness of the grief healing journey and to hold space for the emotional and spiritual well-being of those ready to make peace with unresolved grief. It was through her own healing journey of multiple miscarriages that fully birthed her sacred work. The grief work that she facilitates focuses on energy healing, mindful practices, and soulful rituals so that they can create a sacred relationship with their loss while finding a new way to embrace life. And I hope that you will enjoy this episode and please feel free to share it with anyone you know who may be struggling with miscarriages and let's get started. Hi, Tracy. Welcome to Life is a Treasure podcast. Hi, Michelle. I'm so happy to be here with you today. Thank you. So Tracy and I have known each other for over three years. Tracy lives in Canada. And Tracy, would you just share a little bit about how we met? Absolutely. Well, three years ago, we were both lucky enough to be in a group. I don't know if anybody knows of Rebecca Campbell, but we were in Rebecca Campbell's group, um, Rise Sister Rise. And within that, actually, it wasn't that space. It was uh, Carrie Green space. That too, yes, yeah. Carrie Green space. Yeah. And um, within that, we connected. And we, the reason we connected was because we were both at that time, um, looking to increase or, or bring awareness to both miscarriage, which was my experience, and then Michelle, of course, yours is through abortion. And so we were building our businesses and connecting that way, and we really just hit it off at that time. And, it was, and we really created a friendship very, very quickly over that. <laughs> yes, um, I love how we met, and I love especially that we have stayed in contact. Tracy and I became, uh, we chose each other as accountability partners, so uh, we would meet every single week, and we still do, and talk about what we're doing and how we help people. So it's just been such a pleasure and a joy to meet you and to work with you, Tracy, and I am so honored to have you here on this podcast. I mean, you have watched me from the beginning when it was only a little idea <laughs> to now finally being a guest on the show three years later. And I am just so honored and privileged to have you here to share your journey and to just, um, why don't you start by like letting people know like what you do, what do you do uh, to help right now to help women? Exactly, Michelle. Thank you for that. Well, I work, um, my journey came through multiple miscarriages. Um, and as I went through that process of supporting women through all of that, I realized that where my healing really needed support was with my unresolved grief. I had never really healed um, all the issues that came up from the multiple miscarriages. And it was unresolved grief that I realized I really needed to do a lot of work with and just learn to honor myself and accept myself for who I am. I was never able to become a mother. And so coming to that awareness and that understanding and really learning to accept who I am as the woman that I am today, I really struggled with who am I supposed to be if not a mother? That was a big thing for me. And so I went through that healing process and um, with a lot of support from other amazing women, it made me realize that that's something that so many women really, really needed support with was unresolved grief. And so that is the work that I support people through. Um, it's really an intuitive way of working. There's no cookie cutter way that I serve. It's an individual basis and how that where that woman is in her healing journey and where she wants to go through all of that, what it is that she desires from that. So, yeah, it's really a, a service of 
of uh, self self acceptance going through that journey of healing. Wow, so beautiful. I want I want to ask you something. You said multiple miscarriages. Um, did you find that? Now, I have never had a miscarriage. I have lost my baby because of my abortion. However, we both know that is completely different. You know, I had a choice and whereas miscarriages is out of your control. And I wonder if people listening and I want to, and they might, and things I've heard maybe in the past, because I haven't experienced this, but I have a question. Did it become, I know one miscarriage is hard and difficult and 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 some people don't even feel like they can share publicly or find support which is why I love the work that you do I know many women who've had miscarriages either prior to abortion or especially after they've had abortions and do you find that you know you have one miscarriage but then you have multiple you said so do you find that it gets easier or more difficult after when you've had more than one? That's a great question. Um, For me, speaking from my personal experience, it became more and more difficult with each and every passing Mm -hmm. one. For my first one, I lost it at six weeks. So really, I didn't even know that I was pregnant. I was at work and I didn't even know that I was pregnant and I had Uh lost the baby. And luckily I worked in emergency in the hospital. And so the doctor was right there and was just a wonder. He was so, so supportive of me. But for me, that first miscarriage, was um, it actually gave me hope. I was like, oh, so I can get pregnant. Okay. And this is just, it'll come the next time around. Okay. But it didn't for me. And with uh-huh. each one, I went into a deeper and deeper depression. And I didn't speak mm-hmm. about it with anyone, which was my own mistake. And but, what, um, what- it was... What kept you from not speaking to anyone about it? Well, at the time, I didn't have any family around me. It was my husband and I only, and we had no family around us. And I really felt shame, immediate shame, that I was not able to carry my baby. Each one, after that first one, each one... Um, I lost each one around the three month mark. So just as you know, I'm going to the stores and I'm looking at baby clothes and I'm looking at, you know, possibly setting up a room and what it's going to look like and all the dreams that mothers have. And then I lose the baby. Mm -hmm. And then each time it's like, what did I do? What did I do? I put it on myself. What did I do to lose this baby? Is that where the shame came from? That's where the shame came from. Like, I must have done something. And of Uh, course I didn't. But, you know, that was the place that I was in. And it took me into a really dark, dark place. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing that. Because, as I said, someone from my position, you know, yes, I have shame for what I did. And Mm -hmm. I never could understand, like, why would you have shame? You know, like... If you didn't do this like I did, you know, so thank you for explaining that. And I just like to have clarity around what a woman might feel. You know, let's say someone has a miscarriage and they feel shame and they're like, I don't know why I feel shame. I feel like it's just a really good thing to bring out into the open that they're not alone, that it's okay. It's normal. It's natural to feel shame, even if you've done nothing to where it's not even your fault, but yet they struggle. And I think that might be what keeps them from sharing about it because they don't understand why would I have shame and why am I ashamed when I've done nothing wrong, but yet I feel like I did. Is that correct? That's, that's very correct. And also I was, you know, thinking of my parents and my husband's parents, and they're not going to have a grandchild from okay. us. Uh, yeah. And So I put that on myself as well. And for me, I was raised, or I always had the dream that I would have children. Mm. And, and that just simply didn't happen. And also with multiple miscarriages, you know, my, um, with all that happens through that, my iron levels were dropping. And so my energy was dropping, and I wasn't taking care of myself Mm. properly. And things just weren't being caught. And so emotionally, mentally, physically, I was being drained in every sense of the word. And I'm sure many women Mm. experience that Mm -hmm. unless they are in a space that they can go to their doctor and say, I really need help. But I didn't do that. 
Oh, yeah. And I mean, you know, that's so good point that you're saying, Tracy. It's like, it sounds like that's the time, you know, if we were to have a baby, we take care of ourselves, you know, well, we should, we, we know to do that. But when you have a miscarriage, you're already feeling so sad that you've lost this baby. And now you're feeling shame. And then your hormones are out of whack. And then you don't take care of yourself. So yeah, I could totally see that spiral downward um, from not taking doing the self care. And letting exactly. yourself get worse. And it's almost like, you know, yes, your dreams are devastated, but now it's just compounding. So it is compounding. Yeah. Until the point that women are just feeling like helpless, hopeless, and depressed, and even to the place of suicidal. And how did you snap out of it? I mean, how did you real? I guess I know for sure you have to have awareness, right? Of what. Mm -hmm you're dealing with and, and what's going on. When did you have that aha awareness moment that I am not in a good place? Yeah, um, it started, it was a slow process to be honest, Michelle. It was such a slow process. I remember one time calling my mom because at the time I wasn't working and I would get up to get my husband off to work and I would literally go back to bed and stay mm -hmm. there all day. I did not have the inner strength to even get out of bed. And I remember one time I called my mom and I was telling her how I was feeling. And she's like, Tracy, are you drinking water? Like mm -hmm. something as simple as that. Are you drinking water? And I was like, days had gone by since oh. I'd had anything to drink. So I was highly dehydrated as well. Yeah. And I was just like, that was a, a point in which I was like, oh my God. I'm not doing anything to take mm. care of me. So that was the initial thing. But honestly, I carried my sadness with me. I could function through the day over the years. Um, but inside, mm. I was I was so, so sad inside, but putting on a brave face mm. for the world so nobody knew what was <laughs> going on. My husband didn't even know how sad I was until one day I just, I um, had my own business and I kept going to work and I just kept feeling I just want joy. Mm. I just want joy. And is that a word that some most people don't think of that word like joy? They think of happiness or, you know, anything else but joy. But I kept saying out loud, I just want joy. And that was my wake up call. I was like, okay, what's going to bring joy? And why am I wanting joy in my life? Mm, yes, because, you know, I always say happiness is about what happens to us and it's fleeting. We can be happy one moment and we can be sad the next. We can be happy and sad in the same moment. But joy is from deep down inside our soul. And it sounds yes. like your soul was calling out to you that I want joy again. It's mm -hmm. time to That's find exactly. joy. Yeah, it was a soul calling for sure, Michelle. And that was my wake up call for me that um, it was coming from deep, deep within. I need joy in my life. And, and, and then things just started to unfold. I was like, okay, I need help. And okay. things started to unfold. And it was very shortly after that, that I met up with a girlfriend and I was able to share for the first time in my mm. life. I shared. And how did without that feel? Shame. Oh, it was so freeing. It was so, so God, freeing. Like a burden lifted, and, huh? Exactly. Yes. And then I was able to tell my parents and my husband's oh. parents. And then I had the courage to start sharing. Mm. I think it was right around that time that you and I met. Yes. And we started sharing. Yeah. And the more I shared, the freer I became. Oh, I love it. And more women would start coming to mm. me and saying, oh, I felt that way too. Yes. And as soon as you feel like you're not alone yeah. in this it takes a burden right off of you, just knowing you're not alone. Oh, yeah. So that was your first. So first step, pretty much awareness. And like you became aware. aware that this is not good. This isn't healthy. I need to make changes. And then you reached out for help, right? And you started uh, sharing the secret. So you're bringing it into the light from the dark. And yeah, as yeah. you started sharing and bringing your dark secret into the light, then others saw that light and then they, it's almost like it was contagious. You shared your light 
and then people were drawn to you is that that's what I'm hearing is that yes and I've even had women that are in their 50s and 60s come to me and say thank you for sharing because I had a miscarriage and I never told anybody and I carry that with me today and it was a, I was able to free them up just by having a conversation mm. and, and allowing, holding space for them to share. And, and it's amazing what happens when we open, as women, when we can mm. open our hearts to share with each other and not mm. hold judgment oh, and just yes. be open. Yeah. yeah. And um, what comes to mind is just holding space. And also, a lot of times, I think people don't have the words. They don't know how to put into words what they experience or how they're feeling. And I do remember you were very uh, timid and shy, and you didn't really want to share. And you felt like you needed to share, and you wanted so badly to share, but there were so many things holding you back. And as we worked through those, you know, both of us, I was in the same position as well during the time. And, and then as you started sharing, you like became happier. You've, you found that joy. I could see it on your face. Your whole demeanor changed as you started sharing and other women started seeing that. And then that's contagious. Like that's what they want. They want what you have, you know, it's like, I want what she has. Exactly, exactly. It is contagious, isn't it? Yeah. And just and as women, we can be such a support for each other if we only if we only have that awareness. Just how much being there for each other can change a life, mm-hmm. can change a moment in a day. It's just to be there and to listen and to be compassionate within that space. And I think the biggest thing that you said that is super important is the free, freedom of judgment. I feel judgment is what keeps people in shame. Yeah. Fear of judgment keeps people quiet. It keeps them living in shame. And, you know, that's something you and I both, and we have videos on YouTube with Soul Session sharing about these things because there is no shame. You know, we can, we've all made mistakes and we are never in a position to judge one another because we we're all human and we all make mistakes and none of us are perfect. And so I love that you share that about the safe space and the non-judgment and you and I are very fortunate. We have each other to share, but you know, let's say there's women who don't have anyone who number one understands what they're going through, who's willing to support them and not just say, Oh, get over it. Like how long ago was that? Just get over it. Um, so Tracy, what do you do? And do you have a space and that you offer a safe space for these women that are reaching out to you as you share for them to come to? I absolutely do. I have a space on Facebook. It's a it's a private group and it's called Sacred Grief. And this is kind of an it's an inner sanctuary and it's meant to raise the vibration of unresolved grief. So for these women that are in a place where they're they're willing to start taking those steps to just put themselves out there. And it is about putting yourself out there. You have to you have to take that step. And if you're not willing to, you're going to be holding on to that for forever. So you do need to um, be willing to put yourself out there and just trust that that the person you put yourself out to is going to be there to support you. And as women, we have the capacity in us to be supportive and loving and kind. So if you're in a place where you're ready to heal and you're ready to just take the baby steps even you're welcome to come into this space it's on facebook and it's the group is called sacred grief and they can also find your group through your website tracyswainson.com that's absolutely correct okay. yes and um that so would you say that is the first step that you would tell someone what would you tell someone is the first step if let's say they're at home they're very depressed they don't know what to do with all these feelings that keep coming up about their miscarriage, what is that first step that you would suggest to them? Um, it depends on, you know, there's a number of things that you can do for me journaling. Okay. It was a sacred space that I could go into and I could start writing down exactly how I felt. Nobody else knew about it. 
And I think that was one of my very mm -hmm. first steps. The friend that I had mentioned uh, that was there to support me, she was the one that suggested okay. to start journaling. Good. And I was like, no, I don't want to put my <laughs> words out there. People are going to, what if yeah. somebody finds it? But seriously, who's going to? And it's only, um, it's within your home. It's within your private space. And you can begin writing. If you're not ready to take that step mm -hmm. to actually tell somebody yeah. where you're at, okay. you can journal and put that into your own words. Yeah. yeah. Hey, you know, when we were little girls, didn't we all have a diary? <laughs> and we maybe, did. We it's did. no different. You know, I know women, yes, women freak out. And they're like, oh, but I don't know how to journal. You had a diary. Just get a <laughs> notebook. Go get a diary and write in it. Yeah. And if you're afraid someone's going to read it, I always tell people, burn it up. And just yes, burning it is freedom. It is. And another thing I love to do if you're creative um, I love to write out, especially if something deep in my heart, mm -hmm. like something like this. Um, you can paint over top of it, get oh. creative and, and paint over top of it and create something beautiful or just color, create a mandala, um, mm -hmm. any number of things. And yeah. burning is also, you know, absolutely. That's something I do on when the full moon is to to release my words that that I'm ready to release. So, yeah. Um, but burn it outside, not in the house. <laughs> So if you're listening, burn it outside in a safe place. <laughs> and, uh, and if you're not able to burn it, you know, you can plant it. Yeah. You know, some people aren't in a place. Maybe you live in a condo yeah. or something and, and you can't set it on Ooh. fire. <laughs> you know, you have if you have a planter out on your deck and you go and plant it, it will eventually dissolve and, mm. and disappear. But you're grounding it. your words into the earth and giving it back to Mother Earth. I love that, too, so much. So... Okay, with that, uh, sorry if my dog's barking in the background. This is live. Okay, so with that being said, I love that idea. Oh, I love it. And I also just imagined like someone just writing out everything that they feel, you know, just all the bad things that they're feeling and then taking paint and just painting over it or mark slots, whatever, and just making something beautiful. I love that um, yeah. example of what to do with our... Mm -hmm our words and our shame and our hurt yeah. and our pain. And so thank you for sharing exactly. that. Um, yeah. I also think about when we're talking about burning, I'd like, because Tracy, you are an intuitive grief mentor and also a Reiki energy healer. And I know because we've been friends for over three years that you like crystals and sage and all that. So when we're talking about burning, I just immediately thought of sage. And would you please just share a little bit about why we would, people would burn, like, what is the reason for burning sage? Just share your experience with burning sage for us. Um, for me, burning sage is really, it's, it's a gentle way to release any negative energy that's within your space. So if you're feeling low, you can light a little bit of sage. And we could have even done this in the space here, but um, you can light a piece of sage and just Bring it all around your body, releasing any negative energy that's within your space. Um, if you have an argument with your husband, oh, yeah. which has happened a few <laughs> times, especially right now with all that's going on, you know, the energy feels heavy yes. and we're feeling anxiety. You can light some sage and just go through your space. If you don't have sage, I have a crystal bell that belongs to my grandmother. She's passed on now. I take my crystal bell and I ring it throughout the house and it does the exact same thing. Oh. Um, it just disperses any negative energy. And so it's all done with intention, setting your intention that um, calling in the energy that you desire within the home and releasing any energy that does not serve you. So you mentioned the full moon, right? So is that the time when we, you, the opportune time to release things is during the full moon? Exactly. Okay. The full moon is about releasing okay. and the new moon is about calling in new energies, calling Ooh. in what you're calling into your life. Okay. So let's talk about that. So let's say, you know, women have miscarriages that are miscarriage or miscarriages. They, they feel, they write their feelings down. They get, they release that. What is some examples of things you do for the new moon to replace or how do you, you know, to replace that? And what are the common mm -hmm. things to practice during the new moon? 
During the new moon, again, it's about <laughs> journaling. <laughs> like it or not, ladies, we're journaling. <laughs> it's so healing so, to journey. Journal it is. is so healing, yeah. Um, you could paint, you could draw, you could do a mandala. And as you do it, you're setting the attention as to what, what it is that you're calling in. So if, of course, if it's a baby that you're calling in, um, connect with that baby in spirit. Like we are intuitive beings and we can connect with our spirit babies and just trusting the energy that is flowing. Have an attitude of gratitude. That's a big one, an attitude of gratitude. Okay. And, and just writing down or being creative with what it is that you want to bring into your life. And a lot of times people that work with the moon energy, you know that what it is, um, uh, I'm Scorpio. So if I did this in November at the new moon in November, I know that what I'm calling in is going to be probably coming to the light within me in about six months time. So every moon phase is a six month phase. So oftentimes if you're tracking, if you're journaling and you're tracking and you're, um, you're going to start to see things come, come to light within about a six month period. So, so new, it's a fun thing to track. Yeah. So <laughs> new moon is all about setting intentions, right? Yeah. And Okay, of what you want, like planting the seeds of what the seeds. for your future. Yeah. Okay, so really? let's say, yeah, a lot, a lot of women who suffer through miscarriages, I shouldn't say the word suffer, but but they do. and um, Experience. Yeah, yeah. Experience, experience, experience miscarriages. Experience. And then they're still trying, and so they might set an intention that they, they want to get pregnant and they want to have a baby. They want that seed to be, you know, implanted. But let's say... I mean, and have you done that? You've experienced that in your life. Is that correct? Um, yeah, I actually, of course, I never did have children. So that wasn't my experience. Um, but I wasn't in this space either okay. back at that time. I totally, I wasn't aware. I didn't have okay. that consciousness at the time. So this is something new. But I can honestly say that in tracking the moon energy, the releasing on the full moon and calling in with the new moon, and I have a journal. So I do this new moon, full moon, full moon, new moon. And I can see, I can go back and see what is taking place. And it is within a six month period that you start to see things coming to light. Wow. So if you're tracking and have that awareness, it's a wonderful thing to do. Wow. Yeah, that's true. So not just journaling to help you heal and to see what you're feeling, but yeah. also to look back and see how far you've come and to track things. Like you said, that's another reason to journal is the tracking. Exactly. That's a great, exactly. a, a great tip. Thank you for sharing that. So um, as you said, you were never able to get pregnant. So how did you come to that realization and that awareness and then acceptance that you were not going to be able to have children? Yeah. Um, I was able to get pregnant, but I was not able to carry past the three month period. Okay. And um, for my experience, it was a very sacred, sacred moment. So for me to share this live, um, you don't have to. It's, don't no, it's it's perfectly fine okay. because I've I've come past that, but okay. I've never. I don't think I've ever shared this live. My last experience with um, having a pregnancy and losing my losing my pregnancy. Um, my husband is from New Zealand, and so we took a trip to New Zealand and found out on our anniversary while there that I was pregnant. So what a joyous time. I was able to share that with his parents and um, with his family. And we, it was, it was remarkable. It was a wonderful time, but of course it wasn't meant to be. Um, we had gone to visit some friends and I began to go through the process of miscarriage. Um, but while that was happening for the first time, normally when I was going through a miscarriage, I was deep grief and like, no, and just rejecting it and, mm -hmm. and screaming inside and, and uh, really, really struggling. But this time 
there was like a light that was in that room. And it was like, there was literally like angels were in that space. I was overwhelmed with a feeling of peace. Mm. And it was just the most, I've never experienced anything like this in my life. It was the most remarkable experience. And within that, I had a knowing that that was the last time. There would never be another time. That was the last time. But it was like the angels were there and it was just filling the room with peace. Mm. And I was able to just bless the experience mm. and with so much gratitude. It was unbelievable. I'd never experienced anything like this before, but it was the most healing. Like I was being healed mm. from the inside out in that very moment. And it was an incredible, incredible experience. And I knew that there was not going to be another one. And I did not go through the deep grief that I normally would have experienced. It was a miracle taking place within that room at that time. Was that before you've done any healing work? That was before I'd had any awareness of anything whatsoever. It was the beginning. It was the beginning. Yeah. By the time I had gotten home, we came back to Canada. Uh -huh things just started snowballing. We became friends mm. very shortly oh. after that. And um, it was quite incredible. It was, it was incredible. <laughs> as sad as that is, and as sad as that moment is, Tracy, it's like everything happens for a reason. And we hear that and we get pissed off, you know, because it's like, <laughs> shut up, you know, but it's true, right? You know, it's like, and but that yep. is a, ex a beautiful example of how Yes, you had to go through yet another painful miscarriage. But then, you know, that time was trans transferred or trans trans transmuted. transmuted because there was a purpose in that. And, you know, yeah. you seeking joy. And yet that was the beginning of your process and of your journey. And I always like to say that journey is starts with J-O and ends with Y. And our journey leads us to joy if we allow it to, right? That's awesome, Michelle. <laughs> I just, uh, I love words and letters like that. And I like doing that. And, but I guess that was a realization that came to me a long time ago that our journey and those letters, but you know, that was that moment, Tracy, back then you had no idea what you would be doing today in 2020. No, I had no clue. <laughs> and yet, yeah, but it was a very special moment and it was really a connection. I don't know how many women are able to connect with their spirit babies, but it was a connection that, that just began opening my heart. It was a heart opening experience that, mm -hmm that began my healing journey and it was it's bringing me to tears as we're even talking about it right now so thank you for sharing something yeah. so vulnerable and so deep and i just do believe that you sharing that is going to help women who don't know how to explain or maybe have experienced something similar and maybe don't see it in a positive way and still stuck in the negativity um but i believe everything can be turned into joy you know i believe every negative thing can with healing and realization but mostly healing uh to exactly. become an a positive not a positive experience but can you can make something at, like tears to treasures you know um exactly i just that's my life and your life calling as well and thank you for sharing that because i look at that like that was the beginning that was that was the end but it was the beginning. That's exactly right, Michelle. It absolutely was. And you know, as you speak about the gifts, there's so many gifts that come through our grief experiences. And one of the big ones is empathy. As soon as we experience something like this, we instantly have empathy for others. And it's a gift that comes without us even being having the awareness of it. But because we have that, we are able to show compassion and love for others. I was going to ask you, what is your definition of empathy? Empathy is, uh, for me, it's compassion. It's, mm -hmm. it's a, a deep inner heart compassion that we have for others that which in turn, when we're showing that to mm -hmm. others, we're showing it to ourselves, aren't we? Yeah. So, um, it spreads. It's something that comes within mm -hmm. us and goes out into the world with us. That's what we need more than ever right now, too, in the world with the coronavirus uh, pandemic. 
But um, also, I have another question. You keep, you all often have said "spirit baby." What can you explain what that means, "spirit baby"? <laughs> I wish I could. <laughs> but what if someone listening they said, uh, "I've never heard of spirit baby"? Like, how would you? Haven't you? Yeah, no. If someone listening maybe has never yes. heard that before, okay. what is a spirit yeah. baby to you? Spirit baby is is my is. Spirit baby is is the baby that came through me. Uh, I've had multiple miscarriages, and through that process, and I'm sure every woman who has experienced this, including abortion, would love to have that connection with mm-hmm. their baby that they lost, yes. right? Yes. And that is one thing, like that, to me, that was the mm-hmm. finite detail. I was like, okay, I've done all the work. I've done everything. I've forgiven myself. Um. I did all the healing work that I knew to do, but the missing piece for me was connecting Mm. with my spirit baby. I was like, I just need that. And I'd heard stories of other women who had literally had experiences connecting with their spirit babies. And I never experienced that. And I desperately, I thought if I could just have that one experience of connecting with my spirit baby, then I could, I could release it all and, and just feel peace about the entire thing. Um, and one time I was listening to a podcast with two other women and I wish I could remember the one woman's name, but the other one was, um, Kelly Meehan. Uh, she's a spirit baby communicator and they were doing a meditation to call in your spirit baby. And I was like, Oh my God. I can do that. (laughs) And so right after the podcast, we have a hot tub out back. And so I went out and I did the meditation on my own. I was just in the hot tub and I, I did the meditation and I came back in and naturally after sitting in the hot water, I was really tired. I laid down to have a little sleep. I was out for like 10 minutes and instantly I had a vision, a dream, a vision, whatever it was. Um, of my baby and he came to me as a two-year-old and I was able to speak to him and ask him questions and everything it just came through me it was like instantaneously it just a download of information came through and that was it and I was able to ask him are you the same soul that came through me each time or are there multiples and it came through that he was the same soul that came through me each time and so to me that's my spirit baby and I know that you have named yours yes I have named mine mine was uh it's Bodhi Sean and that's his name and um Bodhi in Sanskrit means awakening and it was his experience right in New Zealand that things began to happen and that was my awakening and it was really beautiful Oh, thank you for sharing that. And I was going to ask you, what did you name your baby? Because I believe so in the, with all of my heart, that every single woman who has carried a baby, uh, even if it's one week, three weeks, six weeks, nine months, has um, a right to name that baby. And when you name that baby and it may sound so foreign and so strange and because it did to me before, but when you give that baby a name, like you give that, them honor, respect and dignity. And then it just, it just is so healing to me. It feels so healing. And I named my son, Joshua David, and I can just share that in case people are listening, like I had no idea whether my baby was a boy or a girl. I did not, I don't have evidence of that. And some women do, I know they, you know, they do, but I did not know. And so I struggle with that, but I get asked very, very often, would, how did you know? You know, and they, and don't, I want anyone listening to not get stuck on that because I could still sit here today and say, well, I don't know if my baby was a boy or a girl, so I can't name him. And I've been he- going, leading women as you have through groups of healing. And every time I will ask them to just start asking, you know, just start asking and, and then looking for signs. And most of the time, it was like you said, through a dream, through a vision. I had a dream over and over about a little boy and 
He, yeah. So I had a strong feeling that my baby was a boy and I went with it because I didn't want to allow myself to stay stuck. So they would, in that group, these women would start asking and then start looking for signs. And most of the time they'd have a dream or something would happen to where they'd say, I feel like my baby's a boy. If they have multiple abortions or an abortion and a miscarriage, they would know, like I had a boy and then I had a girl and I'm going to name this my baby boy and this is my baby girl's name. And that was a big part of our healing ceremony at the end because it's so, uh, it's just so healing to, to do that, to have that name. And it is part of the process. It is part of that healing journey to name them. And um, I just don't want anyone to ever feel like they don't have a right. Every single woman or man, (laughs) you know, you could be a man listening and someone you know had an abortion with your baby or a miscarriage. You can name that child, whatever is significant to you. And um, do you agree, Tracy, that it's very significant to name your child, your babies? It absolutely is, Michelle. I think, you know, you're very right in that all of us are intuitive beings. We are all intuitive and we know. So if it comes through to us that we had a boy or we had a girl, trust that, yeah. go with it. And it really does not matter what anybody mm-hmm. else says. You are the mother who carried this yes. child, whether, like you say, whether it was one week or six months, it does not matter. And same with the father. The father has a right to, and is also very intuitive and he may know within his heart yeah. exactly what that child is and you have a right to name that. And it is so incredibly healing when you give a name to your spirit baby, to your child. And it is an honoring. And seriously, Mm -hmm. when we are able to honor our child, we honor ourselves. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. And, you know, almost every time I will ask someone, do you feel like your baby was a boy or a girl? Because it's not an it, it was a boy or a girl. And they will tell me without a doubt, yes, I feel like my boy. And I said, then name that baby. And a lot of times they will just name it a generic name. Like there's names that can be for boy or a girl. And if that brings peace to that mother or that father, then go for peace. Because that's exactly. what's going to bring the joy. Oh, you're so exactly right, Michelle. So right. I feel like this was very, very good. We have been putting this episode podcast recording off for so long and not for any reason, except we both were trusting the right time and it's happened. And I am so grateful that you were able and willing to share, especially things you've never shared publicly before. Um, I respect that. I acknowledge you for that. I want to thank you. I know that by you sharing that, you're going to help so many women who are listening to this podcast. And um, it just means the world to me that you are doing this work and that you're helping people all over the world who are suffering. Because as I would leave my groups, there's always at least one who had miscarriages. And it was never the same experience for them you know and so there when I found out about you I was like Tracy we need to connect because you can help those women who've had miscarriages better than I can serve them because I went through an abortion I know what that feels like but I have never gone through a miscarriage so I love the the way that we've connected to where we both help women who are grieving the loss of their unborn babies or born babies, you know, because even if they have a stillborn baby or they have a baby and it died of SIDS or any situation, it's still a loss that needs to be grieved. And the world and society doesn't give us the space and the time to address those feelings and to acknowledge it and to just have that time to not only be aware and feel the feelings, but to do the work to heal. And I thank you for what you're doing. And I just want to allow you to have a time to speak to the woman who has had a miscarriage or multiple miscarriages, who is struggling with who she is. You know, maybe she can't ever be a mother. And that has her feeling like she has no worth. And, you know, no, she doesn't feel worthy of healing. 
please, if you wanted to take a second and speak to, as long as you want, speak to that woman and share how you help them and how you can help them. Like if I don't want to just end this episode and they feel like, oh, well, that was great. I heard about her story, but they can take that first step and reach out to you and find out what to do next. Exactly. Thank you, Michelle. Well, first, before I go there, I want to thank you for this platform that you have created and the journey that you've been on to create this space that's going to reach so many women. Um, And if you're out there and you've experienced a miscarriage and you're in a place where you know in your heart that you're ready to come to a sense of peace and healing and honor your experience, it's in honoring your experience that you're going to be able to honor your baby, but you come first as a mother and you are a mother, whether you have other children around you or you are not able to have a child, you are a mother, you have a mother's heart. And please don't be ashamed of calling yourself a mother because you are, you have babies in spirit and they're all around you and they're guiding you each and every step of the way. Um, you're welcome to reach out to me at Tracy Swainson, uh, dot com. Then you can connect with me through there. You can connect with me into my private Facebook group, which is Sacred Grief. And within that space, um, as an intuitive, I work one-on-one with you. I can work in groups, um, holding circles with women in um, just holding space so everybody has an opportunity to speak and to share what's on their heart. Um, I also work with energy healing and with tapping EFT, which is an ability to go through and just work with whatever emotions are on us, feel whatever we're feeling at that time and having the ability to release them through meditation. Um, There's a number of different skills that I use, but if you are ready to take that step, it's just taking that step, holding Mm -hmm. out your hand and all that's all you have to do is hold out your hand and say, please help me. Mm-hmm. Once you reach that place, I promise you, whether I'm the person for you or there's somebody else, there's someone that is mm-hmm. right there ready to support your journey. And you can do this and you can find peace through all this. Yes. And I totally can tell you that you can trust Tracy 100%. And I've been knowing her for over three years. So She will definitely hold your information in the utmost confidentiality and you can trust her and your process uh, through your journey to joy, through your uh, sacred grief. So I encourage you to reach out to Tracy and just let her know, hey, I've been through this and I need, I would love help. That's as simple as it is. And so If you know someone who has experienced a miscarriage or multiple miscarriages, please share this episode with them. Um, Help us to spread the word that there is healing and that they have a right and a a right as a mother, a father, to grieve the loss of their babies. And I just want to thank you again, Tracy, so much for sharing this platform with me, sharing this space with me. Um, sharing your heart with all of us and I just um, pray blessings over you and every woman that has contact with you and for the rest of the journey that you're on on this earth to help bring awareness that we don't have to stay suffering through our grief and that you can help them to embrace a new way of life. So I just want to thank you again for joining, and I'd love to have you back again soon. Thank you, Michelle. I really appreciate that, and I appreciate you as a friend. So thank you for all that you do. Thank you, too. Talk to you later. Thank you so much for joining us in this episode. We hope that you've been inspired and encouraged. Whether you have been through miscarriage yourself or you know someone who has, please help us by sharing this episode with them. You just never know how much that one simple act could impact their entire life. And we'd love to hear from you and how this show has touched you. Our goal and our mission is to help everyone learn to create a life that is a treasure. 
Again, if you would like to find more information about Tracy Swainson, please visit her website at Tracy Swainson, that's S W A I N S O N dot com. And she also has a private Facebook group called Sacred Grief that you can search in the Facebook group sessions and you'll be able to find it. So until next time, peace, love, and joy.